Hello everyone, this is Rabab Alma. Uh, I am a licensed marriage and family therapist and international life coach. Um, we will be talking today about the impact of social media on families. So let me know where are you joining me from. Um, I will go ahead and share this with my other pages while you are joining me. Um, I have um, heard and had several conversations around social media and I see a lot of clients, also parents, are concerned about social media and in the impact of that on their families and their relationships with your uh, children, uh, especially teenagers. So uh, let me know where are you joining me from and if this um, topic is important to you, uh, how is that impacting you? Um, in any way and um, let me know if you have any question you can put it in the comment section I'm sharing this live with my other two pages uh, while people are joining <coughs> um, so again the topic for today is if social media is impacting on how is it impacting our uh, families or families in general. So I wanna point out that these uh, lives or interviews are meant for um, uh, information only. They are not meant for uh, or to replace any medical or therapeutic advice. They are just for tips and general info. If you need professional help, you can contact me or you can contact any therapist close to you uh, and this is just uh, for general information so when we talk about social media and think about it like <clears throat> every day there's a new app I mean children is always on their phone and we see there is a, a noticeable change in the traditional rules between uh, children and parents and how uh, social media is impacting this relationship so there is uh, this uh, the line has been blurred between children and and parents and over the <coughs> excuse me the decades we see the change in the and the roles that parents and children play um, however when it comes to technology so it's really increasing among children and some of them are really young children. And from texting to video games to um, all kind of uh, social media use, Facebook, I don't think yes, Facebook is being used that much with younger people. I think they, 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 they often say it's for older people. <laughs> um, however, uh, the teenagers, they're using Snapchat, Instagram, um, there is another one called Saraha, and I don't know, there are so many apps that they're coming up with that they use and so from my notes here and I was reading this article I think it was important to share that one study found that when working with parents uh, when, when working parents arrive home only 30% get noticed or greeted by their children 50% um, get ignored children don't even know they arrived the children are so busy with their um, gadgets and they are actually out of touch what's going, what's happening in the house. <coughs> Excuse me. So the study also found that the family time was not affected by schoolwork or the use of uh, the technology is not affecting um, uh, affecting the family time, but the social media actually it's affecting the interaction within the family when people or children are on in several social media. So we also want to recognize that these children are, social media is a second nature to them. We parents are sometimes struggling with that. And every time they come up with a new app, we want our children actually to teach us. You know how many times I had my daughter teach me how to use Instagram? And I still make mistakes. <laughs> and she still texts me and tells me, mama, don't do that or maybe try to do this or change that. And of course, she knows better than me. Well, my daughter is an adult and um, of course I will, she's the expert, not me. 
So I will go to her for all of this uh, expertise because I'm learning. I'm still learning it. We and all of us we learn recently all of this stuff, but they are raised with these. So to some extent, we lost the authority when it comes to technology. Who are we to tell them use this and don't use that when we don't even know <laughs> what those gadgets are? So or those apps. So so it's kind of like. Uh, the children, although maybe they don't tell us, but there is a lack of authority. So if we are going to them for help and then we are dictating how to use it, it's kind of like we are contradicting ourselves. So it's, it's, it, I, I found it funny. Um, and we, we, we find it like sometimes difficult to assert ourselves when it comes to technology use uh, because they're more expert. So they are experts. They if they don't voice it, but they, how would they respect our authority when it comes to technology? So that's a, a very good point when it comes to how to look at it um, from a parental perspective. Also, when we look at the, these apps, um, using technology provided children with independence freedom so they are sitting on the phone using this and using that doing this and doing that we don't we actually don't have that much influence uh, back in the days when someone used to or wants to contact the children they will call the landline at home and maybe the parent will respond or answer and maybe they will um, uh, act like a gatekeeper you know, and the parent will know who's calling, when are they calling, and the, the duration of the phone call, what's the demeanor of the child while they are talking on the phone. All of this, a parent can really notice that, but not now. The game has changed, and we are unable to really gather all of this information. So this independence that the children are actually um, um, experiencing or enjoying, it's very difficult for them to give up. And there are so many ways for them, if we prevent this, they will use that, or they will find a way. So I think it's very important to understand the nuances around social media and the limitation, our limitation, when it comes to um, social media. So children see this technological divide between themselves and their parents as freedom freedom from authority over involvement intrusion um, on the part of the parents so you know they're enjoying the freedom why would they give it up so um, also there's another part of it so when some children parents are in their cars and they just give the iPad to their children to just keep them quiet so that provides some kind of sense of freedom for, to the parents so they don't need to think of entertainment i'm busy i'm working on this excel sheet and this child comes in and they want attention so what do i do okay let me give them my the, the ipad just go and play on this you know spend a couple of hours so it's also providing some um uh, convenience for the parent so we need to recognize that instead of the children are uh, instead of having conversation with the, in the family with the family members in the car or long rides we put the videos or the these shows or, or ipads phones um, uh, whatever shows just to keep them entertained and to save us the noise and the uh, are we there yet or whatever it is so it is giving us parents some kind of relief so we need to recognize that also. Um, and using the gadgets are not only limited to homes, so in the car, anywhere, anywhere there is an access, anywhere there is uh, um, Wi-Fi. The first thing a child, when they go anywhere, what's your Wi-Fi password? This is the first question you get. So because it's very important. So, um, but we want to understand uh, 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 that we, or parents, are equally guilty of contributing to this distance, 
between them and their children. <coughs> Excuse me. Parents are often wrapped up in, uh, on their own technology. So you, you often go to, to restaurant and see parents, parents on their phones. And the child, actually I was, I was somewhere like a couple of weeks back. I remember that three years old boy and his mom was sitting across from him. And he, he continued to call her mom, mom, and she's on her phone. She's texting, sending, whatever she's doing. Okay, I w she will just shut him down. She, she doesn't want to talk to him. She's busy. So she's giving them him stuff and she's telling him to play with his toy and he keeps, and the, the more she tells him to be quiet, the actually, the, the louder he became. Well, he's three years old. He doesn't have uh, gadgets yet. He doesn't have a phone or iPhone, but that tells, gives an idea on how we parents actually, we are modeling for our children. So if we are not giving them the attention, why would they? Why would they give us, give us attention? If when they were young, we are so busy on our phones and our phone calls and emails and stuff like that, why would they, when they become an, a teenagers, they would give us attention? We actually planted that seed. So <clears throat> there is a divide. And children, it's easier for them to text now instead of this face-to-face -face communication. Face-to-face -face communication requires skills, eye contact, facial expressions, using the appropriate tone, words, whatever. Now you can just send emoji, LOL, whatever it is, uh, TBH, to be honest with you. On all, of, all of the stuff that I hear, uh, and, and those acronyms are really increasing. Every day there is a new one. So, um, so there is an, an, an considerable debate involves parents and children on Facebook. So some, ch some parents find it, oh, okay, so instead of communicating face-to-face, -face, let me friend my child on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, okay? So now we are friending our friends, our um, children on, on social media and the children hate it. So they go block you or create another account or do whatever so they can retain their independence and privacy. And you actually, sometimes we know, sometimes we don't. They have another account or they are posting something on certain accounts and blocking something on different ones. There are so many ways that they are way more knowledgeable than us when it comes to apps and gadgets. So now also in comparison to previous decades, the size of homes here in the US um, or in, in the West, um, or talking about the US, are really increasing. Everyone has their own corner, their own room. So, um, so we retreat to our corners and to our gadgets. So actually we don't have communication. <clears throat> Families are not spending time with each other. They are not, the family members, they are so busy. There, there are extracurricular uh, uh, activities, there are sports, there are uh, work. If you are in corporate, uh, nine to five is no longer just nine to five. You have to spend two, three hours at night to, to prepare for the next day. And that's why actually I left uh, corporate. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. So sometimes you see parents and children texting while they are in the same home. They are in the same home. One is upstairs and the other one is downstairs or in the basement and they are texting. Okay, this is how they communicate. So there is less connection. Um, unfortunately, there are so many, uh, and then we parents complain. Why is this happening? Or maybe some a problem arises and then we have to solve it and we don't know how. So, <clears throat> So children, although they are on the, uh, they're using their text, but, and they're enjoying that, those children are feeling less connected to their, to their parents. They feel they are um, not that loved or supported or protected, uh, connected, whatever it is. So they feel that they are disconnected. So how to deal with that? And there are so many ways to deal with that. And I will list here some tips. If you have any questions, please go ahead and um, list them. Uh, thank you, Sadia Yunus, for your support and for your, um, for watching. Uh, there, um, uh, Belqasim, there is 
Farhia. So thank you for your uh, support and for tuning in. So there is a, tip, a couple of tips I have here, and I did hear I have my notes because I gathered those notes from some articles I read online, and I think it's very important because this this issue has been uh, is being raised a lot in at mosques, uh, um, churches, um, gatherings, uh, parents and. Uh, clients at practices at offices it's it's extremely important that we pay attention we need to pay attention what's happening and if we don't pay attention then we will be forced to pay attention and sometimes we will be forced in ways that we are not expecting and in ways that we don't like so so first there's one tip here says together with your team visit their social media channel so we you can decide that you and your um, team you can sit and see their favorite and you can make it like a game okay show me what is your favorite channel what is it you like to watch let's watch together and this can more may work and may not but just you we can try we can also ask the team to create a playlist okay so why don't we why don't you make a playlist or your favorite videos or favorite songs and let's uh, um, listen to that together or watch it together um, what do you think of that? Let's have um, a fun night. What would you like to watch? So this is a way to connect with them and to know what interests them. Um, also, maybe using the internet can be a game. So you can guess, um, okay, let me guess what videos you like. Or maybe I will, so I will tell them and they will tell me, no, this is wrong. Okay, correct me. So tell me what you like. Or, no, I like this, no, I don't like that. So make it like a game. This can be a way of connecting with them and you know, discovering in a subtle way what they really like, what interests them. And you can think of alternatives if you think what they're watching is not appropriate. Because believe me, if you are preventing them from watching this and that, they go to school and their friends have phones and gadgets and they will show them, you know, they will tell them what's what we are watching and this show is nice and I, I like this and let me show you that and you wouldn't know. So there are a lot of stuff we don't know. If we, if you think, if I think I know everything about my child, I would be like lying to myself. We don't, we don't know. How would you know? It's, it's easier to think that we know, but let's be realistic, we don't. We don't. So, <coughs> so there are certain rules here. I think before I go over the rules or the suggested rules, if you will, today my colleague mentioned something when we were talking, she is my colleague and my sister, and um, she was saying about parenting out of love, not out of fear. And, um, of course, for privacy, I wouldn't. Men I, I'm not mentioning the name, but she's a very dear friend of mine and a colleague. So, um, and I thought about what she said. It's extremely important to parent out of love, not out of fear. Because if we are parenting out of fear, then we, our children, will hide stuff from us because they're afraid. But if we are parenting out of love, then we are creating a bond and a connection. And in this way, the child will feel connected and committed. So out of love and loyalty, they wouldn't do stuff that they know we don't like. It was such an amazing conversation with this colleague and actually she, she inspired me to have this live tonight and I really thank her and she is watching me. Um, th so thank you. Parenting out of love. We adults, a lot of adults, myself included, included, we grow up and we are taught to be respectful to our parents and to do well and to whatever. But do we ever talk about love? Or just about rules and regulations, responsibilities, we are encouraged to uh, be grateful and like them and to be good and be nice and be whatever. But do we really care about emotions? I want my daughter to love me. 
I don't want her to fear me. Because if she loves me, then I will have a wonderful relationship with her. She will trust me. She will care for me as much as I care for her. It will be a tra transformational when we have love relationship with our children. Do we think about that? Love shows with our tone, behaviors, facial expressions, the words we use, the way we refer to them, the way we talk about them, even with our family members. They hear it, they feel it, they see it. Do we care about that? If you are able to really connect with our children out of love, then we will be able to really achieve the results we, we are looking forward to. So back to the rules. So um, first of all, we know that there is a rule for Facebook that no one under 13 should have a Facebook page. But how would they know? There is no way actually to verify this. Anyone can lie about their age. Sadia, she said yes. They feel everything, our moods especially. Yes, you are right, Sadia. They feel it. They see our mood. They see our. Uh, 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 they feel everything we do. Even if we claim that I didn't say anything, I didn't do anything, but they see it. They feel it. The energy, the nonverbal communication is way more stronger than our words. Yes, you are right, Sadia. So the child should be away from Facebook if they are less than 13 and if you as a parent don't approve of it. So we need actually to exert our authority in a loving way. So being, be, to be loving, it does not mean that you, you are relinquishing your authority, but you are using it in a loving way. There's a huge difference. So <clears throat> you allow your child to have a Facebook page if they are over 13 and if you are comfortable with it. If you are not comfortable with it, it's okay to put that rule. I don't want you to have a Facebook page until whatever age. You decide. And it's okay to decide. And it's okay that for some time they feel upset with you. Relationships is not always about having no conflict and no uh, um, disagreements. It's okay to disagree, but it is, it's about how we deal with conflicts and disagreements. And this is where our skills, our parenting skills show up and our loving uh, ways or our loving approaches show up. The second um, rule is <coughs> check the privacy settings. Yeah, of course, for the internet, I think the router, the way that we set the internet, the Google, also the setup on, 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 uh, on the phone, on Facebook, all of this you can actually control that. There are some actually softwares that parents can obtain and purchase to actually um, uh, block certain sites and certain uh, accesses. Um, like they call it, the, to use the filtering softwares is very important. Um, and create ground rules. So um, every household has rules, whatever it is, you have rules. Like for instance, you need to make your bed or um, the dinner, for instance, we need to sit together on the, on the dinner table at between six and seven, at least two, three times a week. I'm just making up examples. I'm just giving up examples. You set these rules, you set similar rules for being online and Whatever consequences you have for offline rules, that apply to the online rules also. So if someone breaks the rules, then there are consequences for that. And we need to be consistent and to follow up with these rules. It's not based on how I feel. So today I am happy and I, am, I feel good. So my daughter, uh, she broke the rule. Oh, okay, today I'm not gonna, you know, have her bear the consequences of whatever she rules she breaks. But tomorrow I'm upset and mad and someone bothered me, for instance, at work. So I'm going to get that on, you know, not today I'm going to enforce the, it doesn't work. We need to be consistent. 
So we need to have rules. Uh, Dana said rules, structure, and routine are important for kids. Help them feel secure. Exactly. Absolutely. Yes, you are correct. So we need to apply the rules and stick to them. So, and you want to also uh, get to know what your uh, child's habits are. What do, do, do they, what do they like? Uh, what do you, they usually do when they wake up, when they come back from school, when they are doing their homeworks, before they go to bed? And you need to pay attention if you see that their routine is off or they are acting in, in a way that you it's strange or weird. Are they being bullied online? Is there something bothering them? What's going on? Also, you need to have access to their Facebook pages or their... Uh, I, I know a friend of mine that she has... Her son has um, a, 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 an iPhone and I think he is um, 13 maybe or 12. I don't remember exactly. But what she does is... And he knows that wherever text he receives, she receives a duplication. So her phone, actually, every message he receives, she receives. This is a rule, and, she, and he knows that. She is not spying on him. She told him, this is what's going to happen. You have your access, you have your apps, whatever you want to be on, but I have access to everything. And you sit down and you explain to them. You don't just, you know, surprise them, or you want to catch them in the, in the, in the, in the app. You don't want to do that. You don't want to actually create terror for your child. You want to tell them, this is what I'm going to do. If you want to have a phone, these are the rules. I'm going to have access. There are certain things we're not gonna ask them for opinions. We're just gonna do it. It's like you're gonna put them in school. Do you ask them, do you wanna go to school or not? They're gonna go to school, correct? Um, you, you have certain rules that, or certain things that they are is mandatory, and this is one of them. Um, keep the computer in a central location, if they are on computer. But now I know most people have iPhones. But if, <coughs> excuse me, for instance, they have, they wanna do their homeworks on computers, you want to keep the computer in a, in a, in a, in a uh, common place in the household. So everyone can look at it and see what's happening and, you know, it's transparent. And this applies to them and to us. So it's not like I'm an adult. I can do whatever I want. So I take my computer and I go home. I go to my bedroom and I do whatever. Of course, there are adult time. Like, for instance, if I have a spouse and I have my time with them, that's separate. But I'm talking about when they are awake and it's, it's uh, their time. If I'm on the computer, they can come in and they can see me. Like, I can see them. So there is, a, there is a, this reciprocity, if you will. But there are adult time, like for spouses, and that's separate. I'm talking about family time. Also... You want to urge your kids if there are uh, to avoid if some, sometimes you have this pop up on the computer questionnaires contests oh you want this you want that you want to tell them that okay you don't want to click on this when you receive that most of them are you know there are spams or whatever so you just want to ignore it and exit out of it or call me or call your father if you have any issues uh, if you see them or you are you don't know what to do with them so guide them instead of surprising them. Um, monitor the pictures they post online. So you want to make sure that when they post a picture that it's appropriate and you want to make sure that they don't have a location associated with that picture. You don't want the whole world to know where your child at at this moment, at this time. That's unsafe. That's, in, uh, that's not secure. That's not, so you need to, and tell them why. So explain why. Uh, also, <clears throat> be a good, this is, the, this is a big one be a good example on how to use social media. So I cannot be on social media all the time and then ask them not to be on social media. I need to lead by example. Like I cannot be, for instance, driving and every time I am on that traffic light, I grab my phone and I look at it, okay? Then it's green, okay, I will put it down and drive. And then I do that again and again and again. And then when they start driving, Listen, you put your phone away in the compartment and then look at it. How would they listen to me? Why would they listen to me if I am not actually leading by example? So, also, you can limit cell phone use. For instance, 
when we are at the dinner table, we don't have phone with us. We put them away. For instance, uh, there is a window for a phone use between, for instance, 8 and 10. After 10, no one is using uh, cell phones. So you need to have some, like you have curfew. If they are driving, for instance, wouldn't your child, isn't he, he or she supposed to be home at a certain time? It's the same thing. Applies for f cell phones. You wouldn't have your child, your 15 or 15, I don't know now, 16, 16 or 17 years old drive at 12 o'clock at night. It's not even allowed in some states, like in Pennsylvania, it's not allowed. So they have to be home by a certain time, okay? It's a curfew that's set by the state, and there is a curfew that's set by the family, whether if your, if, if your curfew uh, matches the state or maybe earlier, that's up to you, and they need to abide by that. Or otherwise, maybe they will not drive, or they will be like suspended for a couple of days, whatever rule you have. So we need to have, for instance, don't text and drive, of course, and you can show them there are horrific accidents that happen because of texting. Uh, we, uh, 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 and don't even read the text while you're driving. Okay, I'm not texting, but I am reading every text that's, it's, that's coming in. I mean, that, that's an issue. That's an issue. So um, <clears throat> another one is um, teach your kids about online reputation. And this is a big one also. So we know that there is online prints that we, 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 we leave on the internet. So whatever we put on the internet will follow us. So if I put something inappropriate now when I am 17, and if I'm applying for a job when I am 21, that employer will go online and Google me and they will see what I have. Some people were rejected from employment because what the employer saw online. Those are actually real stories. Those are real stories. So whatever you put online will follow you. You can't just pretend they don't exist. It's very easy now for people to search and find everything about you online. So do you wanna really lose that job opportunity because that post that you put online two, three, four years ago? You don't wanna do that. You're ruining your career. So you wanna have that conversation with your child. We want to also talk to our child about online dangers. So we tell our children, don't speak to st strangers. If they are stranger, if a stranger approaches you, come to your parent, don't talk to them, don't listen. I don't send any stranger to tell you about any information about me. It has to be me or whatever rules that you put. It's the th same thing applies online. Everyone online is a stranger. If you don't really personally know them, they are strangers. So the same rules apply. <coughs> Last one is get to know the technology. So we cannot as parents or as adults hide behind, oh, I don't know much about technology. I am not a tech savvy. Well, I'm guilty of that myself, but it's no longer an excuse. We cannot say that I don't know how to really work the Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or what other, I don't remember no other uh, uh, apps, but there are a lot of them. I cannot really hide behind that and uh, pretend that everything is okay or I don't want to know or it's not my fault because I don't want to learn. We need to learn. We need to understand our children's language. We need to know what's going on. When they sit and talk to us about, oh, this guy told me something about, we need to understand for Snapchat, they put stuff and then the pictures disappear. So when they tell us, we are actually aware what happens. It's not like, what? Oh, really, it disappears? How, when? We need to be aware, we need to catch up. So I think it's important. So the burden is on us as parents to meet our children where they are at in terms of technology and for us to be role models and to set rules and to be to lead by an ex by example if that child has someone to connect and talk with they will not need someone else we need to be that person and i know teenagers will be drawn to their peers more than their parents but we need to do our work so when they are younger we need to provide that environment for them so they are able to find good friends so when they are teenagers they are surrounded with good environment 
So we cannot just come at, at age 15 and the child don't have close friends and the friends that they have, they are not good influence. And then we complain at age 15. What happened in the last 15 years? Where were I? Where was I? I need to provide environment, healthy environment for my child in order for them to form good friendships since they were young. So that when they are 15 or 14, they have good people, good friends, uh, they have good influence, and we can trust that they are with good hands and good influence. That does not happen by chance. We need to put the effort. We need to invest energy, time, effort, love, attention, commitment, communication, trust, positive vibes, peaceful environment. I'm not saying that we are not gonna have conflict at home. We all do, of course, that's natural. But how are we dealing with conflicts? Are we being positive? Are we being effective? Are we te being a good example for our children? Those are all very important points. And this social media thing actually touches on so many parenting skills that we need to master and learn and continuously learn. Because we give birth to our children and they do not come with manual. And we cannot pretend that we know. I know how to parent. No, we don't. We don't. We are learning and every day we are learning. My child is 21, but I still learn and I still uh, uh, experience things and I still like go to seminars as a therapist, as a coach, and I, I still find like fascinating ideas. Like my, my friend and sister today, I mean, she drew my attention to that and I said, oh yeah, I didn't think of that. Or maybe this slipped, slipped my mind. But yeah, parenting with love. That was an amazing idea. Parenting with love is uh, in, uh, in, instead of parenting with aggression or, or, or fear or I am the mother, you should listen to me. Who said so? You can say that, but is that effective? So I hope you like that this life. If you liked it, please like and share. I will download this live on YouTube so you can watch it there and subscribe. <coughs> Excuse me. If you would like to contact me, you can always contact me on Facebook. You can go to my website, rebabalma.com. Uh, I will be happy to assist. Uh, if you have any question, you can uh, drop it in the comment section. Excuse me. I think um, uh, this is a very important topic and we need to pay attention to. And I want to thank again my inspiration, my friend today, that she told that she pointed out the parenting out of love instead of parenting out of fear. So again, if you would like to contact me, please drop a note. Uh, Fatima Amar is online. Thank you for joining, Fatima. So it's it's important to uh, uh, to pay attention. And again, parenting is about self discipline for the parent before disciplining the child. It's about us controlling our reactivity, anxiety, fears, and show our children a role model, a loving, loving role model. So if you have any question, please leave it in the comment and you can contact me. I will leave my, um, uh, my website, my, uh, the YouTube a video after I download it and uh, like this video and share it and thank you for joining me uh, I'm, I'm so passionate as you know about this uh, subject uh, Bil Qasim said thank you for your sharing your knowledge and your time oh thank you for uh, joining uh, Fatima said Rebab is like oh thank you Fatima I appreciate it thank you um, I just love these topics love being there for um, my fellow sisters and brothers so if you have any question please don't hesitate to contact me thank you and i wish you a wonderful evening